Hello, and I want to talk to you about ArgePi Zero. Now, the ArgePi Zero, they're saying $8.99, but if you order one uh, plus shipping, it's $12.30. Very small device, and a couple of cool things about it is it has both Wi Fi and Cat5. Now, it's 10100. There are some options. You can get this hat for two bucks, dollar ninety nine, and it has two additional USB ports. It has an IR receiver. It has a microphone, which is you get what you pay for. So it's not a high end microphone. It has audio out. You can also get a case. Now the case, uh, if you look at the case here, wrong image. All right. It fits with the hat. So now uh, all of the other portions of your Pi device uh, work. And I guess uh, all the components drop in from the bottom. So they must have some methodology. They don't show installing it. But anyhow, that looks pretty good. Now here's something cool. And I bought this before I actually took a look at the pinouts. Now, this is the NAS expansion board. So you can put an MSATA, that, so uh, something that would fit into a Nook, uh, Intel Nook, you know, that's November Uniform Charlie, NUC. Um, so your MSATA board would fit right here. You have a SATA port and the white connector to the left of it is power and I'm assuming that the box, the black connector is power input so you can power that SATA device because I don't think you're going to be pulling all the power off this uh, daughter board from the motherboard and this daughter board's bigger than the motherboard. So what you also get on here is you have the same components as you did on the smaller $2 daughter board. So you have the microphone, the audio in, the IR receiver are all on here. So let's just take a quick look. All right, so here's some more images. And that's the 13-pin connector. And we'll, we'll take a look at that 13-pin connector in a moment. And that's what it looks like with standoffs on the Pi. So you can see the Pi Zero underneath there. And that's Orange Pi Zero. I want to make sure I get that straight. Orange Pi Zero underneath is about half the size of that board. And uh, one of the physical constraints of the board is if you're going to put an MSA to drive in, you're going to need that space just to secure it. Uh, so it's not flopping in the breeze. All right, so now here's the rub. Um, if we take a look, this is the just a block diagram of the Orange Pi Zero pinouts, but here's the 13-pin header here on the left. So we have power, ground, uh, USB for one port, USB for another port, uh, line out for the right, line out for the left, TV out, which is composite TV, not component. Don't get them confused. Mic bias, so that's a mic pin, mic pin, mic pin, IR input pin. So if we connect a NAS to this, the only thing flowing data is USB ports. So either they're you know just forking chaining off one of the USB ports here to give you the NAS connectivity, because um, there's no other way to get data in and out. So what that means is whatever NAS you make of this device is going to be throttled by 480 megabits, so the top speed of the USB, and I believe it's that's USB 2.0, not USB 1.0, I hope. I'd have to look up the spec. So that's the block diagram of the board. Now, I'm going to talk about the cons first, and then the pros, and then the philosophy of use on this. So one cool thing is power over Ethernet. So that, that gets you kind of excited, but then you read the spec and it's, uh, it's not a standard power over Ethernet. To get it to work, you have to solder a uh, bridge or you know wire two pads together, or, or two pairs of pads together, I should say, to get the power from the Ethernet. Now, the board runs on USB, so that's 5 volts, and the power over Ethernet uh, says it's only good for three to four meters. So we're talking max 12 feet. Now, one of the cool things about power over Ethernet is uh, if you can run longer distances with the power over Ethernet in power device. So I put an access point um, in 
my rafters in my house to give Ethernet uh, Wi-Fi to the my the backyard of my property, and I only had to run the Cat Five cable. So it, it's a hundred foot Cat Five run. Uh, so we're talking vertically, uh, you know, ten twelve feet horizontally. I don't know thirty feet, and just routing that we lose some extra wire, and that works fine. So there's uh, a power injector and it splits the power out because the board isn't power over Ethernet ready, uh, the access point. So that's kind of cool, having the ability. So you don't have to run power like an ex if an extension cord or solder some wires together to run power. Worry about power drop over distance um, if, if you can do power over Ethernet. So there, there's a lot of cool things about that. Likewise, if you're doing security cameras, you only have to run one wire if it's a Cat5 camera uh, where you're having wire and uh, wired network connectivity. I always want to say Ethernet. And you don't have to worry about additional power requirements or power wire to the camera. So the other issue is heat. Now, I had a Orange Pi PC and I had some finned aluminum heat sinks on it, and that thing still ran hot. And I was running two things on it. I was running Observium, which is an SNMP network monitoring tool, and Home Automation Assistant. And I'm assuming with the high temperature, it cut its life short. It lasted a little less than a year. Uh, a fellow podcaster gave me this and said, burn it up, and I did. So heat. I have these aluminum, I'm sorry, copper, uh, tall, uh, tined heat sinks on it, and they seem to be doing a good job there. At the time I ordered, the larger ones weren't available, and I would go with them. They actually have uh, extra pins, and they're a little wider on the base and a little shorter, so that may fit under the hat a little easier. So, okay, uh, heat. Uh, my house was 70 degrees. And the Pi, Orange Pi Zero, running Home Automation Assistant only was in, in the 50 degree C range. So that's with a heat sink. The other con is I'm running Diet Pi, and with Diet Pi, you have to fiddle to get the mod installed on boot for Wi Fi. And then the other problem is if you have more than one Orange Pi Zero, the Wi-Fi uses the same MAC address, so you got to fiddle again with that to get different MAC addresses. I have not been able to get Raspbian to run. I haven't seen a specific Raspbian for the Orange Pi Zero. I've tried other Orange Pi Raspbians, and I've tried the stock Raspbian, and I couldn't get it to run. Now, Android, I do get a boot screen. With Android, you've got to use their tool. Is it Phoenix Card to make the card? And... You have to make some selections um, that uh, I'll go over in a few moments on how to configure that to get it to boot. The pros. Uh, micro B power connector, because the other Orange Pi I had used a barrel connector, you know, Canon connector, and that was a little tougher to find. Now, if you're comparing it to an orange, uh, the Orange Pi Zero to the Raspberry Pi Zero, this is a quad core. It has 512 megs of RAM. We got Wi-Fi, Cat5, full-size USB, and the price is $9 to $12. The way that compares to a Raspberry Pi Zero is that the Raspberry Pi has all micro USB connectors. So there's a kit for 15 bucks. Now that includes the SD card, so let's knock five bucks off that. And the kit includes a four-port hub that goes from the micro B to standard USB. It includes some headers, uh, a plastic case, and a Wi-Fi dongle. So now you have Wi-Fi. And if you wanted Ethernet, you could, like, in the $10 range, get a USB to Ethernet adapter. So all of that being said, the $5 Raspberry Pi, or if you got in on Micro Center's $1 sale, you still need about $10 plus to, to get you the same I.O. as uh, the Orange Pi Zero. Now, 
The Orange Pi Zero doesn't have a 40-pin header like all the other Pi devices, which the Raspberry Pi Zero does have. The Orange Pi Zero has composite video out, which I haven't had great success with, and I'll go into that. The Raspberry Pi has a mini HDMI, and you can get the adapter that's with that kit I mentioned, comes with the adapter for that. So if you do need the device to have a head on it, which I typically run these devices headless, the other plus on the Raspberry Pi is that you have a camera connector on the, I think it's the Pi Zero B Plus or Pi Zero Plus or Pi Zero camera. The early ones didn't have the camera connector. This one does. So on the Orange Pi Zero, you don't have that additional camera connector. If you want to run it headless, uh, it's ideally suited for that. If you want to run it as a Wi-Fi connected device or Ethernet connected device, I think the philosophy of use uh, favors the Orange Pi Zero because the Raspberry Pi Zero really favors something you need some programming or some brains for, but you're really not caring about network connectivity. And I that's really where that board excels as far as the philosophy of use. And to bring it up to the standard, meaning Wi-Fi and USB, I'm sorry, Wi-Fi, USB connectivity, full-size USB, and Cat5, you, you have to add a bunch more dollars. Now, okay, so if you want computing power, we're go talking about single core on the Raspberry Pi Zero or quad core on the Orange Pi Zero. Again, the problem is heat. So now you're going to have to add a heat sink to uh, the Orange Pi Zero to keep it reliable. And the Orange Pi Zero is supposed to run Android. Well, if you plug in and composite output, you'll get a display on the screen. You get the splash screen and poke it around on the keyboard, I was able to get to a screen that flickered by and displayed some of the Wi-Fi names. So it looks like it did run, but because of the sync issues on the monitor I pulled out of the closet for this video, I'm not going to go any further into that. So this is supposed to run Android, which sounds like a good feature, sounds kind of cool and got me interested. It's also supposed to run Raspbian. Now there's Orange Pi versions of Raspbian that I haven't been able to get run, get to run, and the stock Raspbian I haven't been able to get to run. This clip is showing Diet Pi running. You get a green light on the board and then the display will output the boot up going on. Diet Pi works, Armbian works, any Debian or Ubuntu has worked. The only thing that hasn't worked is any Raspbian and any Android that I've tried. Well, okay, so the Android did seem to boot, but uh, because there's no real useful video, I'm not able to do anything with it. So in summary, is this a good buy? It might be a better buy than an Orange Pi Zero. I'm still on the fence about the heat issue. I bought two, I'm buying two more. It's not a big investment, so I'm okay with that. It's good for a wireless device. I want to use it for Octoprint, or as they say, Octopi. And I had a couple of more things. One, I'm running Home Automation Assistant on it, and I want to run network monitoring. It may also be useful as an access point because as Wi-Fi and Ethernet. So if you could boost the power enough over the power over Ethernet, it might be a decent access point that, that's subject to individual trial. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck with your Orange Pi Zero if you choose to buy one.